Let's get our sex connected. Well, today's home theater system still poses a lot of questions. For example, what kind of TV should you get? You've got LCD, LED, even projection systems. Today, we're gonna have an in-depth look at all of those. We're also gonna have a look at 3D television. I know everyone's talking about them. Are they all that they're cracked up to be? We'll give you the lowdown. Well, we're gonna help out a viewer today. Let's go to his email. Hi, Get Connected. I recently purchased a new house which has a great home theater room, but the gear inside is pretty old. Can you help me recommend some equipment I should be looking at to update my room? Brian. Well, Brian, you're one of the luckiest emailers yet because we're gonna take you down to a hi-fi center to check out some pretty amazing solutions. Brian, thanks so much for inviting us down to your home. Tell me specifically, what are some of the problems that you're having? Well, when I bought the house, one of the great features about it was this media room. Mm -hmm. And what I'm finding now is that the home theater system is really outdated. It's got a very old projection system, and I have a whole series of speakers that I have no idea what to do with. And I love to entertain, so I really would love to have people over and really wow them. Well, you know, you had a good eye when you picked the house because this is a great structure for a media room. First of all, there's not a lot of natural light that gets into this room and we can control it. So what that's gonna do is give us some options with the screen technology. I see here that you have a projection system. We can actually stay with the projection system and look at some of the HD options, but we can also look at the LCD and the plasma technologies as well. Another thing I like about the room here is an actual square room or a box with four walls. What that does is it allows us to control the sound as well so we can look at together a high resolution or high depth sound system for you. Okay. So what we're gonna do is go and take a look at some options and some things that we can do to transform this room for you. Great, follow me. So Brian, we brought you down to the Hi-Fi Center. This is one of the most premier shops in terms of home entertainment, both video and audio. So we're gonna go inside and talk to Igor. He's gonna give us all of his expertise in terms of what may be right for your media room. You ready for that? Let's do it. Let's go inside. Igor, thanks so much for inviting us down to your store today to take a look at some of these solutions. So Brian has a media room and he's got some outdated equipment. He actually has a projector set up right now. We thought we'd come down today to talk a little bit about TVs out there today. Well, there's, there's three basic choices for technologies uh, of TV. There's plasma, there's LED, and there's LCD, and LCD is on the way out. And LCD never really had the picture quality, so it's been replaced with the LED technology. So now you need to choose whether you're gonna buy a plasma or an LED type TV. And it's funny you say that because so many people think plasma is a thing of the past, but in fact it's still right in there. No, absolutely. Plasma is a current technology being supported by a lot of the major manufacturers. The, really the best way for you to pick is take a look at the picture quality. That's all that really counts at the end of the day, right? I mean, the, the, the specs do play a factor in how the TV is designed and how it performs, but really you need to see if, if you like the, the image quality. And also you have to uh, make sure that the size is right for your room because the LEDs and the plasmas they do come in varying sizes. And I was wondering about that, does one perform better in a size ratio? Like if you want a small TV, is it better to go with one TV versus like a you know 60 inch? Um, not really. There are some, sometimes it, it comes down to cost as well. Plasma has a smaller range of sizes. In plasma you're going to be limited to a 42, a 50, um, or a 65. With LED there's a little bit more variety as far as uh, choices. Also with LED TVs they're much thinner than plasmas. So depending on the decor of your room, if a thinner TV is going to make more sense, then you'll want to opt for the LED uh, version. And price points on these things, are they fairly comparable in their size? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're very, very similar. So some good information on TVs. You have a projector right now in your home. Right, and it's very outdated and I would love to replace it, so what kind of options have I got? Well, we have some great options for projectors. Uh, let me show you. Great.
previously we talked about flat panel TVs, going above a 65 inch size starts to cost a lot of money and becomes an installation challenge. Whereas with a front projection system, you can get an 80, 100, 120 inch screen uh, very easily into your home and all you have is a projector hanging from the ceiling in the back of the room. That's a good point. Does the quality still stand up in those scenarios? Absolutely. You need to make sure that you control the light in the room. So uh, get blackout curtains, turn down the lights, don't try and watch your projector in the middle of the afternoon and you will have fantastic picture quality. And I understand now that uh, projectors are using LED technology. Yeah, definitely. Projectors now with uh, LED light sources means that you don't have to ever change the lamp. They will last you 60, 70, 80,000 hours, which realistically at watching movies for eight hours a day is 20 years. Oh, that's a big thing. In the past, you'd have to buy a new bulb for a projector and that could cost you $1,000. Yeah, definitely. They can cost 500 up to $5,000 for a lamp, oh. uh, but they absolutely, uh, you don't have to do it with an LED uh, projector. The other big advantage of projectors is we are able to show a different aspect ratio, meaning when you watch a blockbuster film on your regular TV, you see the black bars at the top and the bottom, whereas with a true cinemascope screen and a front projection system, those black bars are gone away and you have the ultra-wide screen for a really immersive experience. So that covers our screen technology. Now we need to talk about audio. Yeah, and I have a fantastic sound system set up that I'd love to show you in another room. Sounds good. Coming up soon, we're going to take a look at how we can turn Brian's media room into the next best thing in terms of audio. Well, definitely the big story with home theater entertainment is 3D. Today we're having a look at the latest from Sharp. It's their Sharp Aquos Quattron. And uh, this is state of the art as far as uh, high def 3D television is uh, concerned. It's interesting some of the technology they're, uh, they're building into their TVs now. They're actually using a new color filtering system that adds to the RGB, red, green, and blue. And from there, everything's mixed to get all the colors. Well, because of this new filtering technology, they're actually able to add yellow as well. So it's supposed to make for more vibrant, colorful pictures. Right now we're uh, playing a 3D movie. It's kind of hard to do these uh, segments on TV because you can't actually see the 3D. But you know, I gotta say it, it really does pop out of the screen when you've got the glasses on and you're watching a good movie. It really does enhance that home theater experience. Well, this particular set as well, it's running at 240 hertz. That kind of refers to how fast it can refresh, and that's important when it comes to things like movement. So if you've got fast moving objects on the screen, the faster it can refresh, the more smooth it will be. It also has something called Viper Drive technology. So if you're a big gamer, and uh, a lot of folks are now, you know, if you're into the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3, which has 3D capability games now, you'll actually be able to enjoy it on this particular television. And the Viper Drive actually helps reduce the lag that you might know notice in some video games because they're so fast. What I like about this particular Sharp TV as well is that I do have it hooked up to a Blu-ray player and it's got all sorts of connectivity in the back as far as uh, HDMI ports, but it also allows me to hook up USB drives so I can hook in an external uh, USB hard drive and also Ethernet, even has Wi-Fi built into it. So essentially it allows me to access all my content no matter where it is. So I can access things like photos, uh, my music collection and videos. And I download a lot of videos off the internet. so. Now I can access it directly through the television without having to go through a, a secondary source. So if you're really looking to amp up your home theater system, want to get into 3D, there's lots of movies coming out now in that format. It's a great pick. It's the Sharp Aquos Quattron. Really enhances the color with that uh, fourth color filtering with the yellow. Definitely you'll see a, a noticeable difference. And as far as the 3D is concerned, it's pretty cool. And I really do love the ability to access all my content through uh, USB drives and uh, my home network as well. We've looked at some home theater options on the show today. So in this app look, we want to take some time and talk about the media that you can be listening to or watching with the help of a few good apps. So the first app we're going to take a look at is Zumocast by Zector Inc. This app allows you to stream media from any computer in your home onto your iPod Touch, your iPad, or your iPhone. And regardless of any device you choose to use, the price is still the same. It's free. This app requires you the first time you use it to create a free account with Zumocast. Now you can do this directly right on the app itself or on your computer online. And once you have created your account and you tell the computer only one time which files you want to share between your device and your computer and it only takes a few minutes. The great thing about this app is that you can actually stream all different types of files including audio, video and even PDFs and there's no upload or sync required. Files stay 
stay directly on your computer and it just streams over 3G or Wi-Fi network. Now the downfall is that ZumoCast does not play content with DRM, which includes videos bought on iTunes. And don't forget, the last thing is that the program has to be running both on your computer and the app has to be on your device. Now, if you want to watch media on your TV, but you need a little help figuring out when your favorite TV shows or movies are on, then you really need to download ITV for your iPod Touch or your iPhone. The first time you log into it, it asks you what location you're at and also what service provider you use, whether that be, you know, Bell or Telus Optic or even Shaw Direct. So let's take a look. You go into your TV tab and it gives you a list of all the different TV shows that are playing during that time. And when you're traveling, it's great to use because you can actually enter the postal code of the area you're in and it will tell you what channels your favorite shows are on in that area. Now, my favorite feature is the watching tab. I'm a little bit of a stats geek, so I love how it tells you the percentage of viewers who are actually watching your favorite shows. Look at that. 10.7% of viewers are watching Jerry Springer right now. Now the next tab over is the movies tab. What's great about this is that it allows you to see what movies are playing at the theaters closest to you, and it also gives you directions. And you can also check out the movie's plot summaries, reviews, you can also write a review yourself and look at the movie's trailers, and even gives you a little picture gallery to look at the photo stills from the film. Both ZumoCast and ITV are great media apps to download for your watching or listening pleasure. And the best part is they're both free, and that's your app look. Well, the television landscape is changing dramatically and not in the distant future you might not be getting your television signal from your cable or satellite provider. There's lots of devices on the market now that access content through the internet and your computer system. We've had a look at the Apple TV box before. They've just come out with their uh, new model. And this one's kind of interesting. Unlike the, uh, the previous one, this doesn't actually have a hard drive built into it anymore. So it doesn't actually store content on the device itself. It streams the content off the internet or off your home computer system. On the back, they've, uh, well, there's not too many connections. <laughs> There's the power cable. You've got an HDMI cable, which you hook into your television, and that'll carry the video and the audio signal. But it does have the, uh, the optical out audio as well, too, if you wanted to put that into a, uh, a home receiver. And of course, on the uh, other side here, it's got an ethernet connection, so you could hardwire this into your, your home network. Which we're not using, because we're actually wirelessly connected to our home as well. So you don't need to have a hardwire. But I generally find that hardwiring anything where I'm watching content works better. Better, but I was surprised to see how well it did do with content playing back over that wireless signal. Well, I agree. So the Apple TV uh, box, it has to be synced up with uh, an iTunes account. So you have to have an iTunes account on one of your computers uh, in your home because it's going to be streaming content from that computer and the internet as well using, uh, using it. So up on the screen, it comes with this remote control. We can access the iTunes movie library and that's the whole beauty of this. You don't have to go to the video store anymore. You can basically rent the movies right from the comfort of your home couch. Right now we've got this hooked up to this particular uh, laptop so you can access content. So if you've got your music library on here, you can uh, go in and access it and any video content that you have uh, as well. So uh, the video content has to be in the form of uh, you know a few different file formats, but typically what are called MPEG4 and uh, .mov files. So it is kind of limited as to what kind of video files it can play. If they're not in that format, you're gonna have to convert them over for this uh, box to, uh, to see it. On the internet tab, you've got other options. If you've got a Netflix account, and that's a great thing in Canada. For eight bucks a month, you get unlimited views on uh, popular movie and uh, television shows. You can access uh, YouTube uh, videos, also podcasts. If you've got a mobile me account, um, this is what a lot of uh, Apple and Windows folks have to sync up their different devices. You can even show your picture galleries up here. And uh, Flickr as well, and internet radio. I'm gonna go into Netflix. So it'll actually uh, bring up your Netflix account and check out all the different, uh, yes, I watch The Greatest American Hero. I love that show. <laughs> And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't sing that anthem just yet. No? <laughs> Believe it or not. Okay, so we can go down to movie, TV genres here. Let's just go in and look at some of the choices. You know, you've got Mad Men, Saturday Night Live. You know, you've got older stuff uh, as well, like Greatest American Hero. So it's kind of a real mix of new and old. Same with the movies, uh, I find. But, you know, it's interesting. You know, some people might be able to live with this type of device and not have a cable or satellite connection. That's the point. This is where it's going. And, you know, when people complain to me about Netflix in Canada not having having the most up-to-date content, I generally say it's eight bucks a month. So if there's like one show on there that you'll watch, yeah, it's, it's, like, renting, it's like renting a movie or, yeah. or a TV DVD. Yeah. You can't really lose. 
So it's the latest uh, from Apple, the new Apple TV box. I think it only goes for about 130 bucks, but it really is kind of a window on that whole new world of getting content through your internet connection and your, your home computer network. Well, back a few years ago, the home theater in a box became very, very popular. And essentially, it was a, a DVD player with a built-in amp, and you've got the five uh, speaker and subwoofer surround sound system. And they were super easy to hook up and get some uh, great quality video and sound from your DVD movies. Well, things have come a long way. We now have Blu-ray home theaters in a box. This is the latest from Samsung. It's called their HTC 5500 system. This is kind of cool because it's got the Blu-ray player built in, so you get the super high-definition movies that you can watch, but they've added so many new features. Not only will you be able to connect up to the internet with the device, but it also allows you to hook in additional uh, hard drives with content, and even things like your iPod as well. This particular uh, unit comes with the iPod dock, and I can simply uh, either put in my iPhone or my uh, iPod Touch, and uh, it'll allow me to access all the content that's on the device. Every time I've hooked something up to it, it almost uh, recognizes it instantly so I can access that content right away. And so here now, the menu system allows me to access all the things that are on my iPod, whether that's video, over here to music, or even things like photos. So for example, I can go into my music library here. And again, this is all the music that's on my uh, iPhone. And I can go into my playlist if I want to. I got my 70s uh, slow mix, uh, my 80s mix. Here's all the songs. So I can play that right through the home theater system and it's so easy to use that uh, pretty well anyone can get this up and going right away. I also hooked in through the USB connection on the back uh, an external hard drive that I have. And so I can actually change the source. I can select between the Blu-ray, which is the, the Blu-ray player, the iPod, or the backup device. And I can go in there and now the menu will pertain to the actual hard drive. So I can go into videos. And here I've uh, actually got all my uh, different TV shows and uh, movies that uh, I've downloaded off the internet. The box itself, not only is it that Blu-ray player, but it allows me to access all my other content no matter what device that I have it in. And there's all the TV shows that I have and I can play it back on my big screen TV. Nice thing it is 1080p and if you do play DVDs in here, it'll actually upscale it up to that uh, quality resolution uh, as well. Another neat feature is that internet connectivity. It's got the built-in ethernet port. You can get an optional wireless device to tie into your home network. And uh, what it allows you to do is actually go to the uh, internet uh, at TV menu. And here you can download all sorts of different Samsung apps and uh, access uh, content, whether that be weather, news, or even uh, internet video content, right through the television, through the, uh, the Blu-ray home theater system. So the great thing is that everything is in the box home theater in a box. So you get the unit itself, you get all the wires, the speakers, and those are full surround sound speakers 5.1 with the subwoofer, so you get that nice uh, bass. Again, it's from Samsung, it's a home theater in a box, it's got the Blu-ray, and a great addition to any room in the house where you want to be able to access that content, no matter how you have it, whether that's on a hard drive, on the network, on an iPod, or just a Blu-ray disc. Well, earlier we had a look at all the different types of TVs and projection systems that might fit into Brian's media room. Now what we need to do is look at the audio side. Eager, it's interesting because I find that uh, a lot of people put all their money into their TV, but they don't save enough or plan enough in around what they're doing with the sound. Yeah, that's very true, and it's unfortunate because the sound is 50% of the whole experience. Uh, imagine trying to watch a blockbuster movie with the sound turned off. One common misconception also is that you can get away with tiny little cube speakers mounted on the wall or pull out something you got from the garage, hook it up, and you're going to get great sound. Not the case. You do have to have a properly designed uh, speaker system for your room. We have several floor-standing models. Now, when you have compact speakers, it is important to get them elevated off the floor to the right height, which is... Uh, what you can do with the manufacturer supplied speaker stand. Okay, and now um, I've always wondered this, but when you get a speaker that has all these, like are these are all different speakers in them? Yeah, absolutely. They Each one of the drive units handles a different part of the frequency range. You have bass drivers in the bottom, the yellow ones, the mid-range where all the voices come out of, and then the high frequency comes out of the top. So when it comes to speakers, 
what's actually better, the freestanding speaker or going with something that's actually built into your wall? Uh, for the best sound quality, floor standing speakers are still the way to go, but uh, in some smaller rooms or if you don't like the look of floor standing speakers, an on-wall or an in-wall option um, is definitely good, but you have to be very careful of which on-wall and in-wall uh, speakers you select. Well, that takes us to a good point uh, where the speakers should be laid out in the room. Yeah, what I'd like to do is take you guys to our large theater room where we have a big sound system which is set up properly so you get a good idea of how speakers need to be set up. Awesome. Great. So first we start with the front channels. These are placed to the left and to the right of your projection screen. Now it doesn't matter how many speakers you got, how many drives you I was going to say, that's a lot of speakers. It's a lot of speakers, speaker. yeah. This speaker produces a lot of sound, uh, but this is just one channel out of your five or seven. Mm -hmm. The left and right channels will ha handle a lot of your effects and a lot of your music will come out of them. Uh, then for your dialogue and all the action that happens in the center of the screen, that is handled by the center channel right here. And the reason the center channel here looks a little different than the front channels is we have it mounted below our screen so it's in a horizontal orientation but the actual speakers inside it are the same because you want to have a nice consistent sound across your front stage. Oh, okay that's interesting. And then what has to happen is you need speakers that'll produce the effects give you that feeling of you know being inside the movie actually and that's done by the surround and the rear speakers and because this is a quite a large room we have a 7.1 system which means we have two sides and two back speakers for a total of four surrounds. So really the 5.1 and 7.1 just relates to the amount of speakers you have in a room. That's right. So what does the, the point one stand for then? Well, that's actually for the subwoofer. It's what AJ's standing in front of. The subwoofer is there to reproduce all the low frequency effects, the bass notes. It's designed when someone throws a punch and you get that impact in your chest or when a helicopter crashes into a mountain and the entire room shakes. The subwoofer is the speaker that's responsible for those frequencies. So I got to ask you, when we're looking at a, a system like this, what are we talking about in terms of ballpark? costs? Uh, well, the speaker system in this room is about $25,000 and that's for wow. the speakers only. And wow. We haven't talked about the projector, the amplifiers, the screen, or by the time all set and done, a rooms like this will set you back about $200,000. And uh, so that's, that's for your serious entertainment, the person looking for an entertainment yeah, solution. For sure. Well, I want to thank you so much for allowing us to come down here. The Hi-Fi Center has got to be one of the most awesome stores that I've ever been to in terms of seeing these types of solutions. Thanks, guys. It was great thank meeting you. you. Let's get that bass rocket and see if we can <laughs> pump this place up a bit. Awesome. <laughs> Never leave your house. Very cool. One of the great things I saw that I really liked was the 3D theater. Uh, the projection system they had was amazing. I really feel like I'm walking away knowing a lot more and being able to make a lot more good, solid decisions about what is best for my room. Well, it looks like I have to sell my uh, car to afford some of that home theater gear, maybe even my house. That room is like $200,000. But then if I sold my house, I wouldn't have any place to put the home theater. Then you wouldn't need one, yeah. Well, next episode, we're going to look at some holiday gift ideas for the tech lover in your family. And uh, some of these uh, hopefully won't break the bank. Hey, can I borrow five bucks? No, never lend money to friends or TV show co-hosts. <laughs>